Good morning, folks. A little bit of a change in today's show at the end. We're going next level on the Earth rotation glitches after the surge in interest in the topic yesterday. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star were relatively calm. But she doesn't exactly look blank like sunspot minimum either. Primary feature is the southern coronal hole reaching up to low latitude. Solar wind was extremely quiet. In two or three days, we may see intensified streams from that southern coronal hole, but we have stabilized pretty much completely here in the plasma stream and in geomagnetism. The larger earthquakes continue. 6.1 in Tonga, not going to rattle many cages, but it's the third straight day of above average seismicity. A quick note for our forecasters, Blood echoes are all over the place right now, so it will be utterly necessary to include the superlithospheric signals in your risk analysis, in addition to the sublithospheric ones here. Folks, a quick solar cycle note. I keep seeing papers like this one, describing things like the first active region of the new sunspot cycle. While we all technically wait for it to be retroactively called by the officials, here's another one from one of NASA's top solar science research producers, claiming last solar cycle ended in December of 2019, something we were saying when all those sunspots showed up seven months ago. And when I look at NOAA's charting of the cycles and where we are now, which is at my cursor, I think we can all fairly comfortably say we are in solar cycle 25. Let's get an aesthetic piece here before diving deeper into the science news. This is the map of the Ryugu asteroid. Remember, this is the one being sampled for return to Earth, Sort of a combination mission where they are testing the mining feasibility, hoping to learn more about the asteroid's composition, and really hoping they don't bring back some super microbial life that ends the world. Let's go to the papers and start with a great long-term temperature control study, and the controller is the sun, in two ways. Both the direct means identified here, and which is obvious from the title of the article, but also in the sun's major control over the North Atlantic processes, like the NAO. It's a double solar whammy there. The AGU is making important calls for papers that indicate exactly where the direction of those future papers are going to be heading. One is on the Earth's magnetic field, hoping to focus on the Van Allen data and MMS for everything from space weather interaction to field stability. The other call is on the climate side. Folks, they are asking for anything related to these three hurricanes from 2017, and included in their list is space weather. We've shared the existing papers blaming those hurricanes on space weather. They are in our textbook as well. Now, they want to dive deeper. Golf clap. Not at all unrelated, obscured from ground view and from the satellites above, only visible with sounding rocket experiments flying right through them. We are seeing electric fields, magnetic fields, plasma density changes, and spiral currents with the wind. This takes the idea of electrically controlled weather to another level, and nothing challenges atmospheric electricity like space weather. And that's a great segue into our top stories. Folks, yesterday we shared this, and I could pretty quickly tell, I misjudged how many of you were hearing about this topic for the first time. Geomagnetic jerks, solar storms, and earth rotation glitches, anomalies in the length of a day. Well, two more now from the EGU's annual meeting. This one again confirming the geomagnetic relationship, but also the importance of these measures on the climate. But since your latest introduction here was with those geomagnetic jerks, let's go to the other side of the causation today. They noticed that magnetospheric ring current might be the guilty party during major solar events, when those are the ones that cause the rotation glitches, which, if mistaken about the ring current, can't be all that unrelated to whatever is inducing the current in the low-velocity zone to unlock the crust from the mantle. So what is the magnetospheric ring current? Well, it sits within the Van Allen belts. It is utterly reactive to space weather. For those who remember that story about solar storms creating the temporary third Van Allen belt, yep, that was another ring current excitement produced in there too. Folks, we were just looking at this the other day. The effects of strong electric current on water, olivine, dust, sand, and dirt. Now imagine the largest of all solar storms, the magnetospheric ring current excitement, that's above. And all while the induced current is finding its way through the mantle and perhaps even to the core, creating a geomagnetic jerk at the exact same time. Then, we've got the two triggers of Earth's rotation glitches, glitches in the length of a day, occurring at the same time, 
and as we mentioned yesterday, I don't know how you account for the earth wobbling like a drunkard, or the stories of the long night, or those of the sun rising or setting in the wrong direction, without this. And as I said yesterday, don't forget, what keeps the crust from shifting right now is the low-velocity zone thermoelectric plasticity. Thermal and electric effects are exactly what we're going to see in such a solar event. It's what we see in a geomagnetic jerk, and they're what can disrupt that chemistry and, again, unlock the crust. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. There's more on the catastrophe in Chapter 8 of our book. The rest of the book isn't so bad either, by the way. And of course, below every single video of ours in the description box here on YouTube are tons of resources for you to learn more as well as them pretty much all being on the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org. I will see you in the morning for the daily update. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.